Hey, what's up, everybody? It's January 27th, 2021 in the Big Bear, California area. Oh my gosh, man, I got the hiccups a lot. In the Big Bear, California area. Um, this is the calm before the storm. Tomorrow evening begins the next storm, and it's going to be about starting at about 7, 8 o'clock, and then it's going to go through Friday about lunchtime around then and we could get a foot to a foot and a half from this next little storm. not little storm big storm it depends on if, it, if, if, if the system slows down at all if it stalls out at all we could get more and more but it's going to be a whopper of a system but it looks like it's moving pretty quickly so hopefully it stalls up a little bit and we get more it's possible it's possible but yeah we're on brownie lane right now coming up to summit boulevard <coughs> this is where you guys go to go skiing the left here if we get hit by any cars. Yeah. Cause there's a little bit of traffic on the main roads. We're taking the side streets. traffic's like so we can potentially take Big Bear Boulevard I uh, you know we're, we're good we're good Big Bear Boulevard is fine right here at least like the cars are flying here's Carl's Jr. at the on the exit road of uh, Snow Summit this is called Thrush Street oh yeah Nobody coming this way. There's nobody really coming that way. Great, this is awesome. Take it. changed his food like three months ago and he was totally fine but he's just he's vomiting all the time whenever he eats not always right afterwards but he's always vomiting for the past week but he seems totally fine and just happy as hell and purring all the time like usual but i can tell something's wrong so he's he's going in tomorrow at 10 30. <sighs> telling you man It's not easy doing anything else in life when stuff like this is going on to your best friend. All right, hang on. All right, you guys, this is all aw these clouds right here in front of us, like right there, that looks like snow, a snow packed mountain at the top of the tree right there. It's not, that's a freaking awesome looking cloud. I'm not talking that cloud up there. I'm talking like if you see in the tree right below, right there. Oh. Thank you. See, you gotta say thank you. You gotta say thank you and be happy. Be very grateful people let you buy because they don't have to. Oh no, they don't have to. No. Oh no. Oh, Long Johnson. 
Oh, Long Johnson. <laughs> oh, Long Johnson. Oh, Long Johnson. <laughs> oh, what's up, cutie pie? Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. I'm not a... Never mind. I'm a freaking guy. Give me a break. Like, all this crap about giving us guys when we're like, hey, what's up? What's up, beautiful? I mean, come on. If a girl goes up to us, it's like, what's up, sexy? Like, we take that as a compliment. Like, like we're, like, blown away. But when we say it to a girl, it's like freaking the cops show up and stuff. <laughs> or at least, you know what? That's probably just my experience. But anyway, here's our hotel. What's up, Mr. Hotel? How you doing? Pretty good, sir. How, how was your stay here? Oh, I had a good time. Well, that's great, sir. <laughs> I don't know why I have so many problems, but I do. 99 problems and a woman is all of them all right so yeah we're here at the end the village the little entrance and the exit of the village if you guys like pizza i like pizza this place village pizza is pretty good the reason why i still don't eat there much is because my mentality is still like it was when i first moved up here i had nothing you guys i moved up here to die i'm not kidding my family hated me, no one wanted to be around me, and that ended up making me think I was really a piece of crap. I really believed I was a piece of crap, because that's all I heard from my family. Not necessarily so much my mom and dad, but um, from all my six siblings, my aunts and uncles, um, some of my family who were supposedly supposed to be respected and stuff. So, as you can imagine, you guys, when you're told something over and over again for years and years, you start to believe it, especially when it comes from the people you trust. And my family, you know, you trust them, right? You trust them to be honest with you, even if it's what you don't want to hear. You trust them to say you're a jerk or, or you know, obviously in a, a different manner. But so I moved up here to die. Basically, I was asked to leave and stuff like, like that. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't expect anything up here. Um, I was mooching off my dad when I first moved up here. He was sending me money to survive from the other side of the country. And he's in, he's in his 80s. Um, like, and he, he doesn't have it, but he was helping me every month pay for my rent and stuff for the first year that I was here. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit that, but you know what? Like, as I said, I moved up here to die. I had nothing, no ambition, no motivation to do anything because, you know, I took to the belief that I was a piece of crap like everyone else where I came from said. Um, but the most amazing thing, you guys, which I never took into consideration at all is that that was that one group of people, but that's who I spent all my time, my whole life with. Um, once I got up here, nobody treats me the way that my family treats me down there. Not even close. And so it took a good year, or maybe even two years up here, to finally start to think about myself a little differently. Because I started to realize that, you know what? Wow, my family's, like most of them just are not the greatest, greatest people out there. Um, and because most of them fail, they want everyone else around them to fail just so uh, they don't have to have a reason or someone else can can throw out an excuse for them to actually do something with their lives and, and work hard instead of using me as a scapegoat whenever they can. So my family up here, my friends, at, or mostly acquaintances. I don't have that many friends, but my acquaintances up here, um, they've all treated me completely differently. They treat me like I'm like the most special person in the world. They, they all want to be around me. Every Christmas, Thanksgiving time, like I swear I have 15 to 20 invites up here to spend time with them and their families um, because they want to be around me. I'm always having to say no to go hang out because I'm so busy these days, but I'm telling you guys, like, for those of you who, who constantly get disparaged by people who you trust, I, I'm telling you, you need to stop listening to them because unfortunately, human nature in many ways, if you're not doing well and you're failing in life, it, seeing other people around you doing well deep down bothers you because you want to be that and then when that other person ends up if they end up failing then secretly you're happy about it because you're not doing crap with your life so might as well just uh you know 
project your BS onto other people. And uh, that's what I got for most of, of my life. But as I said, since it was coming from the people I trust, or, or you're supposed to trust, because they're supposed to look out for you the most of, of anybody, since they were saying these things, I believed it, of course. And it, especially when it was years and years of it being said over and over again, but knowing to myself that I'm not that type of a mean, awful human being. But I swear to God, you guys, I started, I started to believe it. And like, I would like, like literally just try to figure out what the heck am I doing that's so freaking awful and I just could never figure things out because I'm one who takes responsibility and I'm proud to. I'm so happy to take responsibility for what I do because you know what, I'm, I'm a man and that's the right thing to do. You know, if you're willing to do the, do the crime, then do the time. And so I'm always stepping up to the plate when it comes to my responsibilities. I always am. Um, and, and especially taking responsibility, I always am. So therefore, I don't want you guys to listen to the people around you who are putting you down and, and making you feel like you aren't worth it. I'm a perfect example that that is such BS. Follow your heart. And uh, as hard as it is, as I said, stop listening to those negative Nancys around you. It's probably in most cases, they're afraid you're gonna steal some of their thunder. I'm not kidding. That's what I feel like it was with 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 me is that deep down they were secretly, you know, afraid of everything that I would accomplish in life because it would make them look how they look now. And you know what, I'm not gonna talk too much trash on my siblings because they have to live their own existence, which is pretty trashy all by itself. So and then like my family wants wants to spend time with like the siblings that went to jail for the worst of crimes. But then me, the one who checks himself into rehab after rehab and is finally sober from alcohol, like for seven and a half years, almost eight, like they don't want to associate with, with, with me. But uh, uh, other, other people with like, guys, crimes that like you guys would, or think would be the most disgusting crimes on the planet. And yet like they go spend Christmas at this guy's house, my whole family, and I'm not invited. Not that I would want to be there with him because I, I think like what what he did is just such well, such a weak move but um like uh it's just so ass backwards with my family it's like the twilight zone and and it, it just sucks because i love my mom and dad more than anything in the world and what's really sad is that i couldn't care less if i see my siblings again i really couldn't you know they should have thought about this years ago but i know they don't care because narcissism and being a sociopath runs rampant in my family, unfortunately. I mean, r runs rampant. I mean, I'm surprised most of my siblings are not serial killers, to be quite honest. Like, that's just how screwed up they are. But it's all good, I'm living my life. I have my new family, which is you guys, and you guys love me to death. And you know what, I love you guys to death. I love you guys so much, you have no idea. Anyways, we're on Switzerland. This is that street at the base of Snow Summit. Look at how much snow we got here. Wow. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Are they pulling snow? It looks like they're pulling snow. I thought they'd be pulling a kid in that thing. What is that? Oh no, it's an animal. Oh no, man. Oh no. That is so sad, man. Oh no. It looked like a dead dog, you guys. Oh my God, dude, that just ruined my freaking day. Oh my God. I just, oh my God. I don't wanna see that stuff. I'm sorry I even said something. I didn't think about it. I just saw it and I said it. I'm, I'm so sorry. That's so, it's so devastating, man. That, that breaks my heart so much, especially because I'm really thinking about my cat right now and it's killing me. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's change the subject. So here we're on Switzerland, guys. We got some deep, deep snow here. I mean, look at the sides here. Look at this, guys. This is huge snow. Look, we'll pull up to the side and then I'll, I'll roll down my window just so you can see. Look, it's 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 at my eye level here. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy. Let's hit the gas and fly up this thing, even though we can't see what's coming out over the other side. Problems, dude. No problems, bro. There we go. Someone's 
sledding down this hill there there it is look at that he's actually making some good speed going down this this little hill yeah buddy to the left of the jeep you guys see that yeah or he's probably on a snowboard <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy for you guys, man. This is what I'm talking about. This is called winter fun right here. I'm gonna ask him how the conditions were. Hey there. How were the conditions up there? It was okay. All right, cool, cool. Later. So that response sounded like someone who doesn't know how to snowboard, so they probably didn't have the greatest of time. That's why they're sitting on their butt sledding on the snowboard. So I'm guaranteeing you guys, the conditions are epic. Epic, she didn't know what the hell she's talking about. Epic conditions. So we're gonna turn left here. I mean, you guys will be so stoked. So now we're on Elm Street. Every town has an Elm Street. That's Freddy right there. <laughs> I can't wait to go see my kitty kitty. Make sure he's okay. Less than 24 hours I get to take him into the vet. I'm so excited, but I'm so, so scared. If something happens to him, you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fall off the planet, I promise you. So I won't be around for a while. I'm, I'm not insinuating I'm gonna kill myself, so please do not think that. Even though I get more pain seeing my pets pass on than I do humans pass on. And maybe that's because my relationship with, with, with my pets is so special where I, I feel like they understand me and I talk to them all the time. And they don't talk back and they listen. And my cat especially, I feel like he totally knows what I'm going through. I really do. Anyway, we're back on Moon Ridge Road. I want to stay there. We're going to rent that Airbnb right across from my house. And yeah. Hey, guys, you need to be winter wise, okay? Or be water wise. Winter wise. Winter wise. Love you all. It is January 27, 2021, Big Bear Lake, California. And this is the calm before the storm. As I said, we have another foot to a foot and a half coming beginning tomorrow night. So get your buns up here and have a good time, guys. Have a good time. Here we go, and plowing through it, yeah, dog. Yeah, we got two feet in here for sure. Love you all.